and welcome to my knitting and spinning podcast. I live in Brisbane, Australia with my husband and our pets, Cookie the dog and Possum and Moon the Burk parakeet. Um, welcome to episode one. I'm really looking forward to hanging out with you and getting to know you a bit. Um, this is a place for me to share what I've been knitting and spinning, maybe inspire you to try out something new, um, and maybe we'll both uh, learn something through me doing a podcast. Um, I'm hoping to upload fortnightly, um, but I am not going to be incredibly strict on myself. Um, I'm a bit of a slow knitter at the moment, so just depending on how much stuff I have to show and tell will depend on how often I am podcasting. Okay, so today um, I'm going to have a giveaway and I'm also going to show you some finished objects um, things I'm working on and then some treasures that I've collected or um, bought uh, recently. Okay, so before we get into the giveaway and all of that other stuff, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my knitting and spinning history. So knitting, um, I actually learned from my grandma how to cast on and do a knit and purl stitch when I was in primary school. And I kind of was like, the end product of it was I knitted some squiggly little pink thing um, and that was it. Uh, I was doing it at lunchtime at school and one of my teachers teased me and called me a grandma. So I just dropped it. Um, I didn't pick up knitting again until I was... Um, in my early 20s, maybe late teens, um, and uh, I knit some scarves like everyone does, um, and uh, I knit a hat, which I'm going to show you, but that was maybe later on. Um, but I haven't, uh, haven't picked up knitting seriously again until February this year. So I'm really excited to show you some of the things that I've um, knit this year and excited about um, things that I'm going to knit in the future. So I'm working my way towards a cardigan. Um, still a beginner, just did socks. Uh, so I'm really excited. Um, and spinning. So uh, spinning, I got interested in it in about 2014. Um, now I had uh, this fancy idea in my head that when I was retired I'm going to own an alpaca farm <laughs> um, and I also love bunnies so having angora bunnies would be amazing. Um, and so I thought okay I should learn to spin so I can uh, use fibre. Um, so I went for a trip to Tasmania and this was where spinning really started. Um, I was studying photography at the time and documenting my parents um, on their um, kind of grey nomading around trip in Tasmania um, they, and kind of like about the empty nest thing. Um, so documenting them and I thought oh cool we can go to an alpaca farm while we're here because um, there are a few in Tasmania. Um, and I bought a whole fleece. Um, so, got home, didn't have a wheel or anything, <laughs> didn't know anything about spinning. Um, got home, borrowed my husband's grandfather's spinning wheel and got him to show me how to set it up. And then watched some YouTube tutorials and um, went from there. Kind of went, okay, today I'm gonna learn how to spin. Sat down with the wheel got really frustrated um, but eventually I figured out the very basic um, like drafting and adding the twists and letting it go through. Um, so since then just been like practicing little by little I'm only just now because I haven't been very very focused on it um, only just now starting to sort of understand how to make a balanced yarn. So I'm excited for you to be a part of that journey as well as I actually get good at spinning. Um, I have uh, spun a few things to knit, uh, so I'm gonna show you those as well today. Um, okay, cool, so that's 
that's kind of my knitting and spinning history. Um, giveaway! <laughs> so I picked up this book, Aussie Fair, um, at the Lifeline Book Fest in Brisbane and I really love it. I thought it was like so quirky and weird and I love that there are like Australian motifs and it's really rare to find something like this. Um, so I fell in love with the book and then my grandma just uh, found one at the op shop um, and sent it to me and she said that if I already had it, which I did, um, to give it away to someone. So, one of you lucky viewers gets uh, a lovely copy of this book, Aussie Fair. Um, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and then post a comment below what is your favourite Australian animal. Too easy! And then um, I can get in contact with you and post this to you. So I'll show you a little bit of what's in it. It has some really good simple cardigan patterns and a lot of different shapes as well um, and then it's got the the feral chart so that you even if you didn't want to knit Australian patterns but you liked the cardigan style um, you can put whatever pattern you want to in the chart and then knit the cardigan so it's really cool um, I really love this little baby one. Um, I can't wear it because it's a baby pattern but um, I really like the, the cockatoos and the pastel colours. Um, a lot of the knitting I have to show you today is actually pastel and I like pastel so that's something. Um, yeah so I'll remind you about that again at the end. Um, first giveaway, yay! Okay from that book I was inspired to knit a pair of socks using some of the motifs, um, so the koalas and the kangaroos particularly. Um, and these, these are the socks I knit. They are very chunky and um, not really great for Brisbane because they're like we call DK weight eight ply, and um, they're eight ply. You would never. It, like maybe bed socks for like the very coldest part of winter but like um but yeah it was a good good lesson I learned how to do, do a um heel flap and gusset I knit it was the first time I'd ever knit fair owl as well so um learning a bit about that um they were cuffed down what else to tell I don't know they are really cute I do like them. Um, I love the koalas. They're so cute. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Did I have... <laughs> Sorry, I do have notes. Oh, right. The pattern. The pattern is a uh, drops pattern. Now, they have a lot of good free patterns um, with, again, really simple garment shapes. Um, so this one was number U-765 and they call it the Sweet As Candy Socks. So it had a, um, a feral chart and I've changed the chart so that it included the Australia motifs. Yeah. And then it on DPNs. Okay. The second one is, oh, <laughs> I need a helper for this. Cookie! Treat! Cookie! Come on! Come here! It's a puppy jumper. <laughs> and Cookie's wearing it. Come on! Treats! She takes some convincing sometimes. There you go, you can have that. And puppy jumper! 
So this one was another drops design. Um, I won't read it out, I'll put it up. Um, and again, I changed the feral pattern. Um, and I know it in pastel colors. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> Don't lick me. Um, yeah, and I really love the uh, little ooh, puppy. Uh, the little love heart design. I'll let her go because she's she doesn't want to be held up. <laughs> um, so the only thing I didn't uh, did like the only thing I would change about this jumper is make it <laughs> sniffing for more treats. Um, make it a little bit longer, um, just so that it kind of covers her butt area a bit more. It is a very well-worn jumper. I knit this at the beginning of winter, so she's been... Okay, do your bed, go on. She's been um, wearing that in the backyard all winter. Um, yeah, she loves it, she loves her jumpers. Okay, go back to bed. That's it, thank you. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so the next one I'm going to show you is actually a woven project. Um, last year I was kind of like looking for things to do and um, exploring a few different areas of fibre arts and I thought it would be cool to learn weaving. Um, so this is actually only one of two scarfs that I've woven so far. But the interesting thing is that I built a heedle loom. Um, I won't show you it because it's a bit rough and clunky, um, but it works. Uh, so I knit, uh, sorry, I wove this pastel scarf. I was also trying to um, use up some like old yarn that I had. Some's wool, some's acrylic. Um, I really like this moon that I embroidered on as well. And I was just trying out like, you know, doing some little loops and uh, patches of color. And I kind of um, modeled it off of the night sky. Or like, um, <clears throat> you know, when you can see the outline of the moon and some stars are twinkling and so the pom-poms are stars. <laughs> also, I just really love pom-poms. I'll pop it on. I've worn this a few times out. Really like it. Little tassels on the end. Yeah. So, um, the other scarf I wore was um, grey and black and it was for a gift. Okay, this one is uh, kind of an oldie. I didn't knit that uh, the next one this year. I knit it a few years ago, but I'm going to show you because it's super cute, but also um, I learnt felting when I did this. So, my dear beanie, um, with felted antlers, uh, it's by Tiny Owl Knits who is like one of my favorite uh, knitwear designers. She does lots of really cute woodland stuff. This next one is also a hat and it is from my hand spun. Um, I got the fiber for this hat uh, from Fibershare. So my first Fibershare that I did earlier this year. Um, I'm actually going to share a short-ish, I think, video about um, my Fibershare this time. Um, put this on. Um, it's a really fun thing to do, um, and it's just like Christmas. You get a parcel in the post, and you also get to give someone a parcel um, of fibery goodness and other little bits and pieces. Um, so yeah, this this fiber was called Easter Egg um, by my buddy Twisted Mum Yarn. Um, yeah, so her little uh, fiber dyeing, she's an indie dyer, um, company is called Firefly Fiber Arts and she's on Etsy. Um, <laughs> Cookie's like sniffling into my scarves, scarves and socks. She's still looking for treats. <laughs> oh my. 
Okay, um, yeah, so this, I designed it myself. I just took um, my head measurements and then looked up like how you um, work out the gauge for stuff. Oh, very descriptive, I am. <laughs> Sorry. I actually um, wrote down the pattern and then uh, lost a page. So I can't make this again, but I, it's moss, moss stitch with, uh, I think it's two by two. Yeah, two by two ribbing and um, a pom pom on top. Uh, yeah, I really like the colors. It's kind of, I think someone said it was like a impressionist painting. Oh, oh no no no, Van Gogh. It reminded them of um, Van Gogh's screaming painting. Yeah, and it's actually got pink Selena through it as well, which is really cool. Okay, that's something. Alright, um, second last finished object. This is where it gets interesting. Cool. <laughs> My first pair of, um, fingering weight yarn, like sock yarn, knitted socks, um, that I can actually wear with like shoes and, <laughs> um, okay, so they are pastel pink, very nice. Um, this pattern is by The Wool Club, it's called the Fraser Fur Socks. Um, and I knit it with a one of a kind colorway from Lush Fiber Art Designs, um, which is the uh, dyeing, oh, what's it called? Um, the Arts and Craft Cottage have their own line of um, dyed yarn. Yes. So this is merino nylon. I don't remember how much of each, probably 80, 20. And um, the techniques that I learned, other than like, um, Re relearning how to do a sock. Um, <clears throat> these ones were toe up instead of cuff down, so that was new, and therefore it had a different uh, way of doing the heel. But it, I think it was still kind of like a heel flap and gusset. Um, I really like the. This was. Um, oh, I've forgotten. <laughs> You, you, um, slip a stitch, and then knit, and then, oh man, I'll just put the technique up, because I cannot remember what it's called, it has a name. Um, I also learnt how to do twisted stitches for these lovely little fir trees on the side, so they go on both sides. Um, yeah, these are so comfy. Um, Knitted socks, like, so many people are like, oh, why bother? Um, but the feeling of those pearl stitches under your feet is, like, heavenly. <laughs> it is actually not surprising that people get addicted to knitting um, socks. Yeah. Definitely, I, I want my sock drawer to be, like, well, I have, like, this sock container. <laughs> But I want it to be all knitted socks. Oh, so yummy. Um, I really love that colorway as well. I wish that it wasn't one of a kind. There you go. Oh, well. Is that all about those? Uh, oh, that's right. I also did them two at a time. Um, guys, do it two at a time. <laughs> it's so much better. I still have a single sock from uh, when I did before these ones and I just I don't think I'm gonna knit it it's so painful um, yeah it's the tutorials on YouTube are really really good um, so look those up knit two at a time the only thing I will suggest is please get a really really good pair of um, like interchangeable needles or at least a really good pair of fixed circular because I used for the these pink socks um, a crappy like really thick strained pair of cheap circular needles and it took forever 
Like, I was sitting on these for about a month, and that was all I was knitting, and I was knitting every day. Too long. It took too long. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got a higher, higher pair of interchangeable circulars now, and I'll show you those later because they're a treasure that I have acquired. Um, yeah, they're so good. Okay. Oh, I also had a note to say that the Arts and Craft Cottage have a really nice colorway called In Interstellar that I like. It's, um, I'll put a picture up. It's like spacey and lovely and it's on my list to get. Cool. Alright. Um, this one. <laughs> a bit messy still. I haven't woven in the ends because this is a mistake pair of mittens. <laughs> This is a lesson I've learned. Okay, um, my sister recently moved to Canada and um, she mentioned that she really needed to buy some mittens because it was going to be really cold and they like to go um, snowboarding and stuff. So I thought, oh yeah, cool, I'll knit her like a really good woolen pair of mittens. Um, and I thought, I'll just challenge myself and spin for them as well. So um, I thought, uh, I'll get some alpaca and mix it with um, English Leicester that I had, so long wool Leicester. Um, I'll actually show you. Um, so this is the long wool Leicester. <clears throat> it's really, it has nice luster, really long staple length and it's got quite a bit of, not as much crimp as merino but you can see it's like wavy. Um, so the gloves were 30% uh, long wool Leicester and 70% alpaca. Um, and this is the sum of the alpaca. So it was from an alpaca named Blue Moon who lives near Ipswich. Um, and I bought his fibre at the Echo, which is like the Brisbane rural show. Um, so people bring their animals and show them and there's rides and stuff as well um yeah so he he's actually a gray alpaca so m the majority of his fiber was um a little bit darker than this gray and then all the colors of the alpaca rainbow like is incredible there were reddy browns and chocolate browns and this patch where it was like fawn and white mixed together and gray yeah, amazing. Um, but I wanted the um, gloves to be a little bit stronger than just having alpaca. Sorry. Um, because, you know, they're mittens, they're on your hands, they get used a lot. Okay, so where it went wrong. Um, I spun the singles and they looked amazing. And then I plied them together, but at the same speed, uh, like tension that I spun them. And I got a really, really over twisted yarn. So you can see here, it's like all those loops just form. And when you knit with a really over twisted yarn, you get what's called bias. So I'll, I'll put a close up of this but the stitches are curving around and that actually makes it constrict in on your hand quite a bit and they're not very comfortable and they feel kind of hard and they don't look very good um, so I actually put the yarn that I made back through the <laughs> cookie um, back through the spinning wheel um, and took out some of the twist so that it was more balanced. Um, so I think now I've learned, um, because it, it has happened on another skein, I just haven't used that skein for anything yet. Um, but I think the lesson is you put your, you ply at a faster tension to what you've spun the singles. So I'm going to give that a go for my next. Um, project and see see if that's the fix um, but yeah I ended up with a really cute pair of um, mittens and um, the projects in my Ravelry if you wanted to have a look yeah 
All right, that's finished objects. Whips, okay. Um, purple socks. This is a little bag that I, my family got as a present from a Japanese exchange student. Um, so inside, I'll just take it out and show you the inside. I'm pretty sure this is dyed with indigo. <clears throat> it's got a little um, shibori pattern on the inside. Um, I don't really particularly like the pattern, so I just turn it the other way. And <laughs> it's still a really nice blue with some little wooden beads. Um, my brother actually had possession of this and then he um, was clearing out stuff and uh, I saw it and I was like, oh, I'll have that please. <laughs> Project bag. Okay, so these are the, I've got, this is actually a half finished object. These are the socks I was talking about where I knit them one at a time and I don't think I'll finish them. <laughs> um, the fiber is, I think it might be merino, but uh, it was on the spinning wheel that I got borrowed from um, Ryan's grandfather and I thought oh yeah I'll just use that um, so it's really cool purpley colors so he spun this and I've gotten this far <laughs> with the second sock and they're actually looking very different um, which would be okay. It is singles though, and um, I don't think I knew that you shouldn't knit socks with single ply when I started them. Now I'm at a point where I'm like deciding whether I just frog the whole lot and knit, like, knit it in a shawl or something, or if I just keep on going and be very gentle when I wear them. <laughs> Um, yeah, not sure. So that one's been on the needles for a while, um, and I don't know when I'll finish them. <clears throat> I probably won't show you them again though unless I do actually finish them. Okay. Oh yeah, so that one is a free pattern, Hedgehog Fibers Vestigial Socks. Um, yeah, I learned don't knit with singles when you're knitting socks. The next work in progress I call my eucalyptus poncho um, because I have dyed the yarn with eucalyptus leaves and bark. So I've actually done a little bit of experimenting with natural colours um, and I'm about to start using acid dyes um, although I do prefer natural colours just because um, you can gather things from around you and use what you've got opposed to buying something extra to um, dye the yarn with. But uh, I mean, acid dyes, speckled yarn, I just couldn't resist so I have to give that a go. Um, Alright, so I keep this poncho next to the coffee table in this bag. Um, I made this from some, it's probably got fuzz all over it, um, op shop fabric that I got and then two little patterned fabrics that I got from Spotlight, which is our like local craft, well, big local craft store. Um, okay, so this pattern is actually by Tiny Owl Knits, again, one of my favorites. Um, and it has normally um, a fawn in color work on the front, but I thought, I love the shape of that poncho and it has two little like armhole things to put your hands out. Um, but I want to try dyeing eucalyptus, um, dyeing with eucalyptus and so I thought I'll do a fair isle design instead of the fawn. So I've, I've, <laughs> I've left this for a while because I haven't finished designing the rest of the fair isle. <laughs> it actually goes this way. Um, yeah, so I'm up to the part where you split 
and the, the um, back and then the front so that you've got the two gaps for the arms. Um, yeah, I haven't, I don't know when I'll finish this. I thought I would get it done by the time, like just in time to wear it a few times in winter, but winter's been and gone. Um, although it is nice and cold and rainy today. Uh, what else about this one? I just design the feral patterns, like get a few ideas from the internet and then use InDesign to chart out what I need to do. Um, it was a little bit tricky working out how many repeats in each row, um, but I think I've done pretty well figuring it out. There are probably a few mistakes on the back. Um, the colours, I thought that it would look a bit more contrasty than they do, um, but I don't really mind like that overall washed pastel kind of look. Um, yeah, I'm knitting it on 6mm needles, at the moment I'm knitting this back part on straight needles, but I've been using the circular. These are the, the cheapies that I was talking about, it's really hard to push the yarn over, especially when it's like a very thin one and sock yarn. Um, these ones aren't too bad I think. Again, 8 ply. It is the like easiest, cheapest thing to get um, in Brisbane. We don't have a lot of specialty yarn stores. Um, so yeah, it's better than acrylic. This is pure wool, but the cheaper one, um, which I wanted to buy because I was just experimenting with colours um, is Australian wool but it is manufactured or like processed in China um, yeah so I'm, I've actually ordered some like good quality sock yarn that I'm gonna dye so that'll probably be in the next episode um, some acid dyeing experiments um, I'll just show you the the balls in the eucalyptus colours. So this one I think was from a bark um, and it went pink and then I don't know if this was the same same uh, species but when you add iron um, the pink goes grey. It's really lovely grey. Um, similarly with a yellow from the leaves yellow when you add iron goes green which is pretty neat so you can get a whole like huge color range just from leaves and bark and depending on what kind of eucalyptus it is and if it's been hot that year or really wet that year um, depends on what color you'll get so in that way it's um, very unreliable because you never really know what color you're gonna get you can kind of um, guess and hope like this tree usually makes yellow or this bark usually makes pink is probably about as close as you can really get um another like orange light orangey color and then like a greeny beige so yeah they're the colors that i've got for this poncho um i'll let you know how i go i might knit on it a little bit more um in the coming weeks the next whip though is one I've been working on a lot and it is um, some gift knitting for my husband. Um, it is well overdue for his birthday but I'm going to get it done this month because um, I've entered it in a cow as well, my very first cow. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh yeah, the other thing about the poncho was that the pattern called for Aran weight yarn held double or triple, something like that, um, which was far too thick for Brisbane weather. So I found that the um, doing the Fair Isle allowed for enough thickness that it made a nice fabric, um, but it wasn't too thick that I could never wear it. Um, yeah. Because uh, you get, you know, you get the loops on the back of the ferrule, which make it a little bit thicker than if you were just knitting plain. Okay. 
I'll show you this bag as well. I made this one and um, apart from the strings being dodgy, I like it a lot. <laughs> um, just a little drawstring bag uh, made out of linen and dyed with avocado pips. And my husband made me these little Banksia beads. Um, and they're cool because they've got, like, Banksia have these little mouths on them, which is where the seeds come out. And um, they've got the little patterns from those. And then the core is like this little flower shape. Um, yeah, I think they're really sweet. He said they're really difficult to make though, so um, I may not be getting any more of those. <laughs> Okay, this is the like nicest pair of socks I've ever knit, and I wish I could keep them, um, but they are for him. They are the Hedgehog Fibers Sprouting Socks. It's also a free pattern on Ravelry. Um, I love these free patterns. <laughs> and, oops, a little stitch marker fell off. These are my... Um, higher highers they are very sharp and like lovely and slippy and I cannot believe how silky the cord is <laughs> they're just so nice I've knit these so much quicker than my pink socks um, again two at a time but this time they are um, cuff down I actually prefer the cuff down even though you have to cast on more stitches um, because the Heel flap and gusset is a lot simpler um, to do that way. Uh, I heels. I ha haven't tried like the popular fish lips kiss yet. Um, I really like the extra cushion in the heel that you can do when you're doing a heel flap, and it's just that like little extra detail and texture. I don't mind spending the time doing. Yeah, so I don't mind uh, doing the extra little bit of work to get that um, texture and extra squishiness in the heel. Um, really like it. So this has a beautiful cable pattern. And now, am I getting... I made a mistake on one of the socks. But it's probably not that noticeable. I think this is the good sock though amazing cable I've never done cabling before like I've I've um tried it just to see how it worked but um yeah this is the first maybe that is the anyway this is the first time that I've made anything with cables I would definitely do it again I like them it is like not very difficult for a very like a thing that looks very nice <laughs> um, yeah so hopefully he likes those they are so late for his birthday but it's worth it worth the wait then he too can feel the lovely pearl stitches on his feet <laughs> this pattern's really cool too because it is very stretchy so um, it's just one size and it's made so that it can fit like a man or a woman foot and with most socks um, You just knit the foot part until five centimeters um, Less than what you need it to be so you leave five centimeters for the toe. So I think I've got Maybe three or four centimeters left to do on the toe uh, the foot and then I can decrease for the toe so yeah, these will definitely be finished by next podcast. Um, they're my favourite. Oh yeah, the colourway and the yarn. Oh. Hedgehog Fibres yarn as well in the ink colourway. Um, and Hedgehog Fibres um, has 90% merino, 10% nylon, which I thought was good. Like you still get um, the strength of the nylon, but it is like um, not as not as much <laughs> so um because i i really like natural fibers but i know that with sock yarn you really have to have something to make it that little bit stronger um because otherwise you'll just wear them out too quickly and all that work for uh 
little time until you have to don them. Mm. Okay, so uh, in my little sock bag as well, or on it, I have a label, which has little knit stitches behind and then socks. Um, I laser cut these at um, the Edge in Brisbane, which is like a communal workspace and they have a laser cutter and 3D printers and stuff, it's really good. You just have to do an induction and then um, you can book it. It is a very popular machine though, so it takes a while to um, get a booking, but really cool that I can just laser cut stuff. Um, yeah, so I also keep this little tin with all my notions in it. So I've got stitch markers and darning needle with a little magnet so it keeps on there. Um, yeah, it's handy. And it came with pins in it, clearly, uh, when I got it, but little tins are really useful. Oh, these stitch markers as well. Um, my fiber share buddy gave them to me. They are really adorable. They were one of my favorite things. Um, oh boy, I was gonna share some fiber share uh, fiber as well in my treasures part. I'll have to go and get them. Um, and then I just made some progress keepers with some little beads. And I use those to um, to mark where the um, side of the foot is. Keep track. So that when I'm bringing, bringing it around it's easier. I don't have to like count stitches or anything. That's that. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you with my works in progress was actually my Kiki K planner, um, which is this lovely gorgeous thing. Um, I got this around about my birthday time, um, so like part way through the year, and I don't have a lot of like appointments or anything that I have to keep, but I find it great for like planning out my days, etc. But I also have a section, which is my fiber section. So it has um, knitting patterns in it, as well as, so I'll show you this one. This is the, whoops, <laughs> it's just a loose pencil in there. The sprouting socks pattern, and I just print them out um, on A5 paper and punch holes and pop them in. And then I can also have like a note sheet for my tally. So I can keep track of where I'm up to um, rows wise and uh, what part of the pattern I'm up to, <clears throat> which is really handy. I used to have my patterns just like A4 printed out loose in the project bag and they get scrunched and you know, like I'd spill stuff on them and whatever, they just ended up so ratty and then next time you want to knit the same thing you have to print it out again because you can't understand it anymore. Um, so yeah, this is like a good way of saving paper and keeping everything neat and tidy. Um, and I can just leave my whole planner on the coffee table and it's there for me every day. Yeah, um, I also have a goals section in here. Where are you? Here we go. <clears throat> so um, I've got one for knitting goals and I've got one for spinning goals and I've got one for sewing goals. Um, I also have one for like general life goals but pretty much that's just got make a podcast <laughs> on it um, at the moment so maybe some more stuff next year who knows. Um, so my knitting goals at the moment are finish UFOs learn some lace and knit a cardigan um, and then for each goal there's like a separate page that has like all the steps you need to achieve that goal and now I'm like when you meet a milestone or whatever yeah so I love my planner and I do decorate some pages um yeah planners are a whole nother thing this one is actually a work in progress for spinning, which I forgot to bring down. Um, and it is 
the most luscious, beautiful fiber I have ever laid my hands on. Um, and I got it from my fiber share buddy, Twisted Yarn Mama. I think that was it. Anyway, I'll put it up. Um, and it is the, her Lavender Kisses colorway, um, which is 30% German Angora, 25% Merino, 25% Targi, and I think I'm saying that right, um, and 20% Nylon. Um, so I'm actually, because it's so precious, I thought I will spin this on my medieval spindle. <laughs> um, she also sent a little sachet of lavender with it, so you know, like spin and sniff. Um, so my medieval spindle, it's a little support spindle, um, and oh, did I put where I got it from? I've forgotten to make notes on this even. Um, I'll put a link to the um, Etsy shop for the spindles. Um, it's cherry wood, which incidentally is my magic wand as well. I am in Ravenclaw. <laughs> um, I think it's even the right length for my wand. And then an alabaster stone. So you can take the stone well off. Um, and you can get them in a uh, top well. So the little slit here is at the bottom, I think. Um, but I prefer the bottom well. I just find it easier to handle. Um, I haven't spun very much at all. Um, I kind of got excited about it when I first got the spindle and the fibre and then I've been doing other things. Um, but eventually I'll make a three ply yarn and make that into a shawl or something. Um, yeah, I just got the little dish at Daiso, <laughs> which is the Japanese cheap store. Um, but I really like the pattern. And it's always nice to get things uh, for cheap. Okay. Treasures. I've already shown you my higher higher needles with the cable. I also got a size 4mm um, in preparation for doing a cardigan of some description. Um, I got size 4 because uh, that is what the soiree jumper from Pom Pom requires and I think that that might be my first cardigan jumper garment thing. Ooh, maybe it's such a nice pattern. Which brings me to another treasure. Um, I got this at my local yarn store. Um, I was so glad that they had this cover. I really love this cover um, of the anniversary issue. Um, this has so many patterns in it and so many nice ones. Um, I'll just share with you Soiree. Where are you? At the front. So I really like um, the cables and the texture there under the arm. Um, Apart from the fact that it looks like super comfy and like a lovely style, um, I just like that that little bit of interesting texture. Um, I also really love that in this issue they name all of the patterns after like different words for party. Um, I thought that was really cute. So I also really want to knit, I think it's called Boom, um, just a really nice sleeveless singlet. Um, I find, um, well Brisbane is really hot so if I want to wear knitted things in summer then of course they have to be short sleeves or no sleeves. Um, I really like this top actually, it's from Gorman. Um, it's cotton cashmere blend and it just has like little nice short sleeves and it's actually okay to wear in summer. Maybe not on like a super super hot day but like a general kind of 26, 27 degrees Celsius kind of day, it's pretty okay. Um, today is really nice and like rainy, so it's like, mm, it's good. Um, yeah, I, I'm really happy that I got my hands on one of these um, without having to pay international postage, which is good. Um, I was also really surprised when I first saw it in the store that it was this size. 
Um, I don't know if you like it's uh, it's not normal magazine magazine size. Um, it's kind of like a mini, um, but it has so many patterns. It's really thick. So if you haven't got the anniversary issue yet, I would recommend. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. Um, all right, next treasure. In preparation for doing my fiber share parcel, I thought I would get some cozy merino. Um, it's like a merino <laughs> little, little fur baby. Um, yeah, just some 18.5 micron. And I did uh, natural dye roving for this. I dyed with some eucalyptus leaves. I haven't seen a lot of people doing um, like a roving braid in natural dye. So I thought I'd give it a go. Um, it actually worked out. And you can see it in the fiber share um, special episode thingy that I'm going to do. Um, oh, pardon me. A bit uh, sneezy today. Um, yeah, so this was a 500 gram bundle, but now it is a 400 gram bundle. Um, so I'm sure that I will probably acid dye some roving and maybe natural dye some of this as well. And then I'll have either heaps to give to my fiber share buddies in the future or um, heaps to spin. Okay, speaking of uh, dyeing, I also purchased um some landscapes dye so i got the coastal colors because i thought i would like to try out this uh kelp the dark green and then i thought that the coral color um might be nice if i like diluted it a bit so um we'll see about those um i'll sh probably show you some test skeins in the next episode um Landscapes, actually, um, I was reading the instructions and the citric acid or like acid portion of the acid dye is actually included in the powder. Um, so you don't have to like buy citric acid or add vinegar um, to the pot. So that's pretty good, I think. Um, and they work out the same price as jacquard ones, I think, or something like that. I shopped for them a while ago. Um, yeah, but Landscapes is the Australian brand, so I thought I'd try those out. Okay, this next treasure is from my grandma. She likes to op shop, um, so do I, but she, I think she op shops quite a bit. Um, and she lives in like a more country area, so there's a bit more stuff somehow in the op shops there. Um, she found lots of yarn. So she sent me this gigantic bag full of yarn um, and some knitting books. Thank you, Grandma. <laughs> um, so the bottom has like some acrylic lace weight or something in it. So I won't show you those, but I'll show you these other things. Um, so these ones, uh, a mohair acrylic blend, um, where's the 70% mohair, 30% acrylic, bargain, I don't know how much these were, um, but they are made in Turkey, which is pretty cool, and it's a really lovely colour, um, matches my hair probably a little bit too much, I found that I can't really wear, like, solid blues, um, but maybe I could like mix this with something else for a shawl or whatever. I thought about using these um, in the soiree jumper because it calls for like holding double um, mohair with alpaca and something blend, Polworth. Um, but I don't think this will be enough and I can't get any more of it. So I may end up spinning to knit the soiree jumper. Who knows? Um, bit of a challenge. Um, okay, so these ones, I think that these were like $3 and this is like a good Australian yarn brand, Bendigo Woolen Mills. Um, this is five ply, I think, maybe, something, anyway. Oh yeah, it says it on here, five ply. Um, 100% wool, 
So this could um, become part of a shawl or may maybe not socks because I don't think it's, yeah, 100% wool, maybe not socks, but um, definitely something or like part of a crazy cardigan or I could use it for Fair Isle. I like this colour. I don't like the next colour I'm going to show you. <laughs> Again, Bendigo Woolen Mills, and I think these two balls were, um, getting crazy, were $4. I don't know if it was just at a different op shop or if they thought red would sell for more. I don't know. Um, I don't like red, so... <laughs> Sorry to be colourist. Um, yeah. Good wool, but I don't like the colour. So I don't know if I'll like gift knit or maybe do some Christmas knitting or something out of this um, and give it away. The next ones are crinkly. <laughs> crinkle, crinkle. So these little $1 bags. I can't believe how cheap wool goes at op shops. Get out there, look for it. Um, yeah, some Firefly and some Misk, who knows what. I did do a burn test on this one, and it has some, uh, natural fiber content, and maybe some not. It was kind of that iffy in between. Uh, it kind of burnt with a flame, but crumpled still. Look up burn test. It's a really cool way of like, I learned it in India actually, um, cause we went to a rug factory and they were like, how do you know if the rug is made of pure wool? Um, and like shopping in the markets, they're like, make sure you do burn tests. I bought this knowing that it was like part acrylic or something. Um, but it, it was the same, it was like it had some natural content in it because it crumbled after. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little blankie. Um, yeah, okay, so the rest in the bottom there is acrylic. Yeah, cool though, like super cheap yarn. You never know what you're gonna find. It really is like treasure hunting. Um, so that's the end of um, the op shop stuff. That there's just acrylic left in the bottom there now. Um, but yeah, cheap yarn. Go to your local op shop or thrift store. You never know what kind of like pre-loved treasures you're gonna find. Um, maybe you'll find some crochet hooks as well and pattern books. Um, yeah, really good. Like save some money or maybe be inspired by something you hadn't thought of yet just because it's there. Um, okay, so I just wanted to mention a few um, ideas that I'm going to be knitting. Um, so I really want to do some more summer tops. Um, Boom will probably be the first of those. Um, I've got a few other patterns waiting in my Ravelry queue as well. Um, heaps more socks. I'm just going to be sock knitting for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, um, they're so nice. Uh, I actually also like, uh, like a bit higher than ankle length socks, even though it is hot here. Um, I still like wearing sho long sh socks and shoes all year round. Um, so yeah, they, they suit me. Um, I've been looking at some Stephen West patterns as well, just for the inevitable scenario where my stash actually gets a bit bigger and I have like leftover bits of yarn that I want to use in a project. So Penguino is one in my queue um, and there are a few other others of his that I really like. Um, yeah, he's such a fun guy. I can't believe that like uh, grandmas <laughs> are, are into him. It's so funny. Um, and I also like the coziest memory blanket. I think that's another good like uh, stash buster scrappy one. Um, but I actually saw uh, the gentle knitter did a miniature version of the square and I really like that. So I think I'm gonna do that one. Um, yeah, this is the end of my first episode. Thank you so much for hanging out with me um, and watching this. And hopefully we can become friends, make a little community. Um, 
small bit of the larger knitting fiber arts community. Um, there aren't a lot of podcasters or um, I don't want to say younger knitters, knitters that are on the internet. Um, in Australia slash Brisbane particularly, I know there are heaps of people in Melbourne um, because it is colder down there and it makes more sense to knit. But hot weather shouldn't mean you should miss out on knitting, it should just mean that you knit things that are a little bit different. Um, so yeah, you can find me on social media as at Leslie Enid um, and also on Ravelry as the same thing. Um, yeah, happy knitting. Thanks for watching.